Bev Fjunerkamp. Um, when and where were you born? Uh, I was born uh, in July of 1933 and in Illinois. Where did you grow up, if different? I spent the first four years of my life in a very small town in Illinois. And then uh, because of the work situation and the depression, uh, my father went out to, came out to California and then about a year later he sent for my family. And we arrived in Alameda in 1937. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was your occupation? My occupation? Well, I worked before I got married as a secretary. And then after I was married, I didn't work for a number of years. And then when my kids were teenagers <clears throat> in high school, I was a bookkeeper for the Alameda Girls Club, where they mm -hmm. changed their name. And then I went to a full-time position in San Francisco as the a senior assistant controller, which is like an accountant, of the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. And that's the job I retired from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why do you want to share your story? Well, I didn't think about it. I was believe it was my brother that uh, urged me to come in. He'd been interviewed. So I don't know why. Why are you looking for stories? <laughs> um, what were your favorite hobbies? Hobbies? Uh, I was more physical than sitting around and doing things. I, I like to be active. I like to roller skate and ice skate and ride my bicycle. And uh, when I got to, I went to Alameda High School after mm -hmm. starting at the old, oh, <laughs> it went right out of my mind. It was um, an old school down on the West End, which was then replaced. And then I went to hate school for eight years. And then I went to Alameda High School, and I got into a special PE class where the girls could earn their block letters, and that was pretty active. So I like to move around a lot. And in my later life, I found that I really didn't like being chained to a desk. But, and I liked a job, and I made it very clear when I was interviewed that uh, I wanted to be able to move around. You know, if I needed something, I could get up and go get it, and I didn't have to ask permission or things like that. And I was fortunate to get jobs where I could do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, do you have any favorite sports? Well, at the time, uh, ice skating was always my favorite sports. Mm -hmm. um, I can't do it now because my legs don't work. And I also like to swim. I, I swam miles up until four or five years ago when I couldn't get my legs to behave. And I like to walk a lot. I jogged. I jogged over the San Francisco Bay Bridge two times. And um, let's see, and from there we had to jog all the way to Golden Gate Park. And so I enjoyed those. I liked, I always liked to have the wind in my face and I liked to ride my bicycle. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I went on a 700 mile bicycle trip up in the Sierra and had a good time. Okay, okay. So what were your favorite subjects in school? Oh, I always liked reading and spelling and history and uh, Math always gave me a problem, arithmetic as we called it in the lower grades. And then when I got into high school, I didn't take the college required algebra and geometry, although I had a wonderful math teacher who said, you know, you could do it. And, uh, but I was never willing to give it a try in those age. Probably even now, when you're a kid, a teenager, you don't want to look stupid in front of anyone, and you don't want to do anything that will embarrass you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to 
let people know how stupid I was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what like what was it like in Alameda back in the day? Back in the day, well, in 1937, we started out uh, on Fourth Street. We lived in a big old house across the street from Marion Court, which is still in existence. And I went to Longfellow School. That's the school I was trying to remember. And I went to kindergarten there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we moved to Alameda, of course, it was a few years before the World War II started. And it was nice. Uh, it was a nice place. You could get around on the bus very well. My mother didn't have a car, and she got around on, on the bus very well. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, I had uh, five siblings. I'm the youngest of six. There were four, four girls, my brother, and myself. And uh, they went to the old Washington School, and then they moved on up to Alameda High School. And we all graduated from Alameda High School. So, what was the question? <laughs> um, um. Oh, you wanted me to tell you what it was like in Alameda. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Alameda was a, a nice place to grow up. You could, you could go all over Alameda and nobody would bother you. Uh, when we moved later to uh, across the street from Lincoln, uh, not Lincoln, across the street from Haight School. I went to the old Haight School. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember one day, and we weren't very old, my brother was really an explorer and adventurous. And he said in later years that he was going to go down and find my dad. My dad was a carpenter contractor. And he was down on the West End where we used to live. And so my brother and I started walking from Lincoln and Willow all the way back to where we lived on 4th Street. And uh, it was an adventure. And another time, he, uh, we went out walking, and he wanted to go through the tube. We only had one tube, the Posey tube at that time. And that's where I balked. I saw this big black hole with cars coming out of it, and I refused to go. <laughs> and uh, I have to admit, my brother was always an adventurer. So somebody saw us, and they wanted to know what we were doing there, and they took us home in their car. <laughs> and, um, and let's see, Alameda. Um, See, when we were down in the West End, we had the remnants of Neptune Beach, which was an amusement park that, uh, after the World's Fair went to Treasure Island, it took a lot of customers away and eventually closed up. But uh, there was Neptune Beach, and there was a lot of other swimming pools there that we could go to. And then there was one called Cottage Baths, which was in existence um, even after I got out of high school, and that's where we did our swimming. And um, during World War II, we had soldiers quartered at the Veterans Building over on Central. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a cannon, not a, yeah, cannon or a machine gun up on the roof. And and there were other areas we could even go to because they were restricted. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alameda Naval Air Sa Station had finally been completed, and you couldn't go down there. And uh, you know we had blackouts. We'd get a, a you know air raid alarm, and we'd have to black out our houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody caught showing a, a light would be in trouble. And we had food rationing, which meant uh, my mom, in order to feed a family of eight, really had to be a show in ingenuity <laughs> in order to fe feed us all. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember my dad, we had a, a high basement home, 
and my dad had this old bathtub. He always collected things from job sites, and he had this old bathtub that he filled up with sand. In case there was a fire, you could throw sand on the fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had our uh, food storage down there. Uh, anytime there was a sale, my mom would, you know, get a couple extra cans so we'd have food. And then later, my father gave up his contracting business and went to work in one of the shipyards. I think it was more shipyards. We had several along the ocean, uh, Oakland estuary. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of people made their living. And uh, they took the ferry uh, from San Francisco to Oakland and vice versa. We had a ferries running back and forth. Mm -hmm. And we had the red trains, which were commuter trains, and uh, men, uh, usually men, they'd ride down to what was called the mole, M-O-L-E, and then they'd get on a ferry and then ferry, get ferried over to San Francisco to their jobs. So riding the ferry was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, we have them back, but uh, they, they got put out of business <laughs> by General Motors buses which started going, you know, across the bridge. And so uh, uh, we had to do with, put up with those. And what else about Alameda in the wartime? Was, um, have you been, ever been around the naval base, the, the, naval, the Army naval base? Well, uh, after the war, we were able to get onto the naval air station as a captain of the Navy informed me. It is not a base, it is an air station. <laughs> uh, and I said, well, I guess people call it the base because your, your base there. He said, no, we're stationed there. <laughs> he was very clear about that. But eventually, you know, we got to go. My sister married a Navy aviator. They never called them pilots, they were aviators. And so when, he, when they came to town, we could go in there and we could eat at the Naval Air Station and she could shop at the commissary. So in later years, when I realized that I really didn't like sitting at a desk, I worked down there uh, mm -hmm. on the station and they built um, the bike, no, the skate park. And I was very active in that. I really enjoyed doing that. I picked up tools, I set rebar, I cut rebar, and did all kinds of stuff to help the kids build that park. And uh, later on, when it was finally finished, I got a complimentary membership in the operating engineers. Because <laughs> I, even, I even got to use a backhoe. I didn't use the backhoe, I used the front loader and did a lot of things that uh, I enjoyed doing, hammering and stuff like that. And it was quite a community project. And later, those same kids were the ones that, uh, what, were they, what did they call it? They tore down uh, the old CPO club and they, they, re they, re they remodeled it and we put in a, put in a uh, child care center, and, oh uh, gosh, what was it, where was it? How come I don't remember? <laughs> anyway, I spent a lot of time down there, really enjoyed doing it, and uh, I remember one time uh, I was going up a scaffold, and, and this young man said, oh no, I'm not going up there, and I said, why not? I'm an old lady. I said, I'm going up there. I mean, and I even went up uh, on the, uh, not the forklift. Why am I having trouble with these names? Cherry picker? Um, it's a little four-wheeled vehicle that has a scissor, a scissor, lift. Scissor, scissor lift. And I operated that, and got up there, and did help under instruction to do a little wiring. And under instruction, I did some other things. I don't think I could do them now, but uh, I cut metal. I got very good with the uh, saw, cutting metal. Mm -hmm. 
and it was just wonderful. The kids, uh, kids had worked out how they wanted things done, and we put in a nice daycare center down there. And now uh, they have moved uh, to, it's Longfellow School, I think they are. Um, what, are they, <laughs> what is that called? I've done a lot of things, and I, they get kind of mixed up. So mm -hmm. anyway, that was something I really enjoyed. And volunteer work has always been something uh, my family has done. My mother volunteered. But as soon as she got here into Alameda, she was a member of the PTA, and she was always volunteering. And even when she was no longer a young woman, she was in her 70s, and she was still volunteering for the PTA in the uh, public health uh, venue. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, you know, encouraged us to do that. And so uh, especially my brother and, and me, we... Uh, we, do, we have done a lot in Alameda as far as volunteering is concerned. And uh, it's an interesting thing to do, and you learn a lot. I wouldn't have been able to handle tools if I hadn't volunteered for the skate park and uh, the center. Mm -hmm. It's run by Alternatives in Action. <sighs> what was the name of that? <laughs> so anyway. that could be, oh, so go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I was just trying to remember the name. So back in the day, on the in the on the base, because I live on the base, and I was just curious to know. There's a lot of abandoned buildings. And yeah. I want to know what, like, what some of the buildings that's not used anymore, what they used to be used for, like, that the school or the the, the store or the other school. Well, um, I knew kids who. Uh, were at the station. During the war, what they had was, uh, some schools had so many kids, they had what they called double sessions. Mm -hmm. The kids, some kids went in the mornings and uh, some kids went in the afternoon. But we were in the center of town and we got kids from the Naval Air Station. Uh, they were bussed in. They, uh, coming to hate school, they only needed a station wagon. But they came uh, to school uh, and were able to get a full day school uh, at hate school. Yeah. And um, we, as I said, we weren't able to go there. They had a lot of uh, enlisted men quarters where the men stayed when they got off the ships. Because during, we had a lot of naval, uh, I mean, uh, Navy air carriers. We had, uh, besides the Hornet, we had, uh, oh, we would have the Boxer. I looked out when I was out on the beach one day, and I looked down toward the Naval Air Station, and there were five aircraft carriers moored at the Naval Air Station. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we had a, a lot of activity down there during World War II, and even after. My mother-in-law worked at the, it's called the Naval Rework Facility, and what they did was rebuild plane engines and did repair on mm -hmm. things. So that that was a pretty active uh, station. And uh, so when the men, you know, were, were uh, on land, they had their uh, enlisted man's quarters, they had the officer's quarters, they had bachelor quarters, and um, the commissary was a store, that great big abandoned store down there, Atlantic, off, uh, you know, across from Atlantic. That was a store where they could shop and get their groceries and their clothing. Mm -hmm. And they had a theater. In fact, they probably had two theaters because the enlisted men and the officers didn't attend the same theater. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? Well, there's just a lot of activity going on, especially when you have a war going on. And then later, of course, there was a Korean War, so that kept the, kept the station busy. And then um, I don't know if they were so busy during the Vietnam War. And then in, what was it, 1990-something, I can't even remember the date, 
they closed the Naval Air Station down. <laughs> and uh, eventually it was, it was given, given or passed over to the city of Alameda. And they're trying to get things going down there and uh, see if they can generate businesses to come in there. Because some of those hangars are huge, just really huge. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing I don't know if you know it, back in the day, I think it was 1936 before we got here, there was a man named Juan Tripped who wanted to start airline coverage from California to uh, the Philippines and then to China. And he, he had some, he had an airline on the East Coast and he came out and they built this huge um, seaplane mm -hmm. and they were called clippers after the big sailing ship. And he had the China Clipper and others, mm -hmm. but the China Clipper took off from what is now the station and uh, there was an airport there, the Alameda, uh, Alameda Airport or the San Francisco Aerodrome at one time. And it took off from Alameda and flew to uh, Midway and Wake Island and then hopped across the uh, Pacific. And uh, those stops came, became important because the Navy was able to use those stops, uh, take them over and use them for wartime. And those China clippers were beautiful. And only, of course, rich people could afford them because they could sleep in them and they ate in them. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen um, the movie, The Hindenburg, about the big blimp, the Zeppelin. The airship. I haven't seen that movie. Well, anyway, it shows the kind of high style the people had. You know, they were served and all of that. But uh, they had hoped to really make a great transportation uh, uh, program out of it. But uh, when the when the war started, uh, let's see, it started in Alameda. And then in 1938, 39, they had the World's Fair, as they call it. It was really an exposition. And they based those sea uh, clippers uh, uh, at Treasure Island. And that was going to be where we were going to have a big airport. Well, then when the war came along, the Navy took over Treasure Island. So that was the end of the China clippers. Although the Navy had smaller clippers, uh, the, the Mars put out a, a seaplane for the military. And uh, my brother-in-law flew uh, one of those as uh, <sighs> they were on watch so that the United States wouldn't get bombed by Germany. And then later on, he went on to fly a B-24. Uh, but, uh, let's see, Alameda. There's more. Do you have any other questions? I need questions to get me going. Okay. Um, let's see. I think the video was done here. Oh, I yes. I already, I already pretty much heard enough this one. So yeah. I'm well, you know, during the world, uh, during, during the war, the kids in the grammar schools, you know, they were doing things to help us be patriotic. And we used to have uh, tin can drives, collect all the tin cans, tech, uh, collect bacon grease, because that went into the making of bombs, we were told. Um, we had paper drives, took the money and, and supported things with that. and. Um, in fact, I was in a class in which the teacher taught all of us to knit, including the boys, and we knit squares to make afghans. We'd make the squares, and then one of the Red Cross ladies would sew them all together and make the afghans for the ambulances. And we had a big naval hospital uh, in Oakland. I can't even remember the name. <laughs> 
They just tore it down. Uh, anyway, it was a huge naval hospital. Mm -hmm. And I remember my mother taking uh, my brother and I there to visit an Illinois friend who was wounded in the Battle of Tarawa, which was one of the big island battles they had. At Oak Knoll, Oak Knoll Hospital. It's funny how you can't remember. But anyway, the kids contributed to the war effort too. And mm -hmm. that's how we kept busy there. So, uh, Sorry, I have a quick question. You, um, you mentioned the food rationing. Yes. Did you guys have a victory garden? Uh, no, uh, I don't know why we didn't. We had a yard that we could have had it big enough, but we had we kids had to go somewhere to play, and so that was with you know with eight with six kids. Although my two sisters, oldest sisters, were out working then, um, but uh, it was. Uh, we didn't have a victory garden. Oh, and another thing I left out about Alameda, you may have heard about it before, we had the United States Maritime Training Station, and they trained officers for the uh, Merchant Marine. And that was down at the foot of Webster, and some of the buildings are still there. Foot of Webster, there's... Uh, that's how you get down to, one of the ways you can get to Crown Beach, you turn into that street by Foster's mm -hmm. and you can get in there. And that's where the uh, Maritime Service was. And my second sister, Dorothy, worked for them. And um, they were training uh, these men to uh, work in the Maritime Service. And for some reason, they had to wait tables. I don't know, but Dorothy was able to get us down to the Maritime space, uh, Station on Friday nights, and we would have dinner down there. We'd pay for it, very reasonably priced, and it was all done very elegantly. And uh, so that was fun. Mm -hmm. And we would go down there on certain days, and they would have fun things for the kids to do. And, uh, but they, they had a huge swimming pool. It had a high tower, and the men have to, had to go off that tower sometimes, you know, dressed because uh, they didn't know when they were going to be caught in a raid of some kind because the enemy always went after the, the merchant ships. They wanted to stop supplies uh, for the Steel. war. So we had that here in Alameda as well. So, and uh, so we were, we took part in going down to that. So, that's it, unless you have specific questions. Near me? Mm -hmm. I guess we're done. I didn't hear you. Honey. Okay. Oh, I guess we're done. Yes, that's it. Okay. That's great. I would like to take a picture of the two of you. All right. I forgot to do that with the first couple of groups, but I uh -huh. want to have a picture on the print page. Uh -huh. so.